God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Worship, glory, praise, and honour to our God, I throne above. We with many generations join to praise thy name of love. In the scriptures by the Spirit may we see the Saviour's face. His word and heed his calling, know his will and grow in grace. The Lord will protect the rights of the oppressed. Lord, why do you stand far off and hide yourself in times of distress? The poor man is devoured by the pride of the wicked. He is caught in the schemes that others have made. For the wicked man boasts of his heart's desires. The covetous of themes and spurns the Lord. In his pride the wicked says he will not punish. There is no God, such are his thoughts. His path is ever untroubled. Your judgment is far from his mind. His enemies to regards with contempt. He thinks, never shall I falter. Misfortune shall never be my lot. His mouth is full of cursing, pile of oppression, mischief in the seat on his tongue. He lies in wait among the reeds, the innocent he murders in secret. His eyes are on the watch for the helpless man. He lurks in hiding like a lion in his lair. He lurks in hiding to seize the poor. He seizes the poor man and drags him away. He crouches preparing to spring, and the helpless fall beneath his strength. He thinks in his heart God forgets. He hides his face he does not see. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. The Lord will protect the rights of the oppressed. Lord, you have seen our trouble and sorrow. Arise then, Lord, lift up your hand. O God, do not forget the poor. Why should the wicked spurn the Lord and think in his heart he will not punish? But you seen the trouble and sorrow, you know that you take it in hand. The helpless trusts himself with you. 
for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the sinner. Punish his wickedness till nothing remains. The Lord is King forever and ever. The heathen shall perish from the land he rules. Lord, you hear the prayer of the poor. You strengthen their hearts, you turn your ear to protect the rights of the orphan and oppressed so that mortal man may strike terror no more. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and for ages unending. Amen. Lord, you have seen our trouble and sorrow. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished. Truth has gone from the sons of men. False they speak one to another. With lying lips, with a false heart. May the Lord destroy all lying lips, the tongue that speaks high sounding words. Those who say our tongue is our strength, our lips are our own, who's our master? For the poor who are oppressed and the needy who groan, I myself will arise, says the Lord. I will grant the salvation for which they thirst. The words of the Lord are words without alloy. Silver on the furnace, seven times refined. It is you, O Lord, who will take us in your care and protect us forever from this generation. See how the wicked prowl on every side while the worthless are prized highly by the sons of men. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and for ages unending. Amen. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. The Lord guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There is really no need for me to write you about the help being sent to God's people in Judea. I know that you are willing to help, and I have boasted of you to the people of Macedonia. The brothers in Greece, I said, have been ready to help since last year. Your eagerness has stirred up most of them. Now I am sending these brothers so that, out of boasting of you in this matter, so that our boasting of you in this matter may not turn out to be empty words. But just as I said, you will be ready with your help. Or else if the people from Macedonia should come with me and find out that you are not ready, how ashamed we would be. 
not to speak of your shame, for feeling so sure of you. So I thought it necessary to urge these brothers to go to you ahead of me and get ready in advance the gift you promised to make. Then it will be ready when I arrive and it will show that you give because you want to, not because you have to. Remember this, the man who plants few seeds will have a small crop. The one who plants many seeds will have a large crop. Each one of you should give then as he has decided, not with regret or out of a sense of duty, for God loves the one who gives gladly. And God is able to give you more than you need, so that you will always have all you need for yourselves, and more than enough for every good cause. As the scripture says, He gives generously to the poor, His kindness lasts forever. And God, who supplies seed for the sower and bread to eat, will also supply you with all the seed you need and make it grow to produce a rich harvest from your generosity. He will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times so that many will thank God for your gifts they receive from us. For this service you perform not only means meets the needs of God's people, but also produces an outpouring of grateful thanks to God. And because of the proof which this service of yours brings, many will give glory to God for your loyalty to the gospel of Christ, which you profess, and for your generosity in sharing with them and all others. And so they will pray for you with great affection for you because of the extraordinary grace God has shown you. Let us thank God for his priceless gift. Give to others and God will give to you. You will receive a full measure, a generous helping poured into your hands, all that you can hold. The measure you use for others is the one God will use for you. Each one should give as he has decided, not regretting his decision or from a sense of duty. The measure you use for others is the one God will use for you. A reading from the sermons of St. John Damascene. Since the Virgin Mother of God was to be born of Anne, nature did not dare to anticipate the seed of grace, but Anne remained barren until grace produced fruit in her. For it was proper that she, from whom was born the firstborn of all creatures, in whom all things hold together, should be the firstborn of her mother. O blessed couple, Joachim and Anne, all creation is in your debt, for through you is presented the noblest gifts to the Creator, namely a spotless mother, who alone was worthy for the Creator. Be glad, Anne, O barren one, who did not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in travail. Rejoice, Joachim, because from your daughter to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Salvation of the whole world, Angel, Mighty God. That child is God. O blessed couple, certainly the most free from sin, Joachim and Anne. From the fruits of your bodies you are known, just as the Lord somewhere said, by their fruits you shall know them. You adopted a pattern of conduct, such as was pleasing to God, and was proper, in consideration of her, who was sprung from you. By your pure and holy way of life, 
you brought up that jewel of virginity. She who before giving birth was a virgin, who while giving birth was a virgin, and who after giving birth was ever a virgin. Yes, she who was always unique, who was to cherish virginity, in mind, in spirit, and also in body. O couple most pure, Joachim and Anne, while maintaining that chastity prescribed by the law of nature, through divine assistance, you accomplish things beyond nature. You begot for the world the Virgin Mother of God, while you led a dutiful and holy life in this world, you produced a daughter greater than the angels, who is now mistress of the angels. O most beautiful and most fair maiden, O daughter of Adam and mother of God, blessed are the loins and the womb from which you sprung. Blessed are the arms which bore you. Likewise the lips to which you granted the pleasure of your innocent kisses, your parents' lips, only set so that you might foster your virginity in all ways. Make a joyful sound to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Raise up your voice, raise it up. Do not be afraid. They worship God day and night, fasting and praying. They look for the liberation of Israel. They beg God to come and save his people. And they look for the liberation of Israel. Let us pray. Lord God of our fathers, you bestowed on Saint Joachim and Saint Anne this singular grace that their daughter Mary should become the mother of your son Jesus Christ. Grant that at their intercession the salvation you promised to your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.